After losing the previous game, Bronstein decided to play safely in game 20. He had already lost two games in a row in this match, in games 6 and 7, and realized that if this happened again, he would be completely demoralized and the match might be over for him. Therefore, his main goal in this game was to avoid a defeat at all costs and recover from the painful loss in game 19. At the same time, the strategy that he chose for this game contained in itself some poison, as Bronstein writes in his annotations. He started with c4, but Vinik played e6, knight f3, knight f6, g3, b6, bishop g2, bishop b7, castle king side, bishop e7, and by playing d4, Bronstein could have transposed into the Queen's Indian defense. However, he chose a more complicated setup, the Reti opening, b3. But Vinik castled, bishop b2, d5, but Vinik occupies the center with his pawn, c takes d, e takes d, queen c2. So, Bronstein avoids committal pawn moves in the center in order to hide his plans from Batvinik for as long as possible. Rook e8, e3, knight d7, d3. So, but Bronstein keeps for himself the opportunity of playing both e4 or d4 later in the game. So, he keeps hiding his plans. Bishop f8, knight c3, a6. But Vinik is preparing the expansion on the queen side. Rook d1, b5, a4, provoking the further advance of b pawn. b4, knight e2, c5. So, but Vinik already has space advantage. Knight d2. So, just after 16 moves, Bronstein has placed all his pieces on the first two ranks. So, white pieces are passive actually. And black has space advantage and uh, more actively looking pieces. However, Bronstein writes that this is a poisonous strategy. His idea was to provoke black to play actively, which would create weaknesses in black's position, and Bronstein was going to exploit these weaknesses. While in his own position, although his pieces are passive, he doesn't have any serious weaknesses. However, he writes that Batvinik actually outwitted him. He didn't create any weaknesses in his position and just moved his knights, as you will see. Knight e5. The knight is centralized, actively placed on e5. Knight f4, rook c8, queen b1, moving away from the unpleasant x-ray. a5, rook e1, rook c7, and now finally Bronstein makes his plan clear. He plays d4, attacking the knight. But Vinik, in his annotations, writes that he was actually afraid of another plan, of e4, and he was going to reply to e4 with d4. However, after d4, c4 square would be weakened, and white knight would be ideally placed on the blockading square on c4, exerting strong pressure on the queen side and attacking the weak pawn on a5. And white would have a clear active plan, f4 of course, with active play on the king side. Not immediately, of course. First, white would play h3, taking under control g4 square, so that after f4 the knight cannot jump on g4. That would be catastrophic, because the knight would then jump from g4 to e3, which would be weakened after f4, and uh, that would be very bad for white. But after h3, preparing f4, pushing away the knight from e5, which controls c4 square, then placing white knight on d2 on uh, c4, white would retain the advantages of his position and would have uh, active play. And Batvinik was afraid of this plan. However, Bronstein, instead of e4, chose another plan, d4. And his idea was to create the isolated pawn on d5 in black's position, the weakness. Knight g6, attacking the knight on f4. And here both Bronstein and Batvinik in their annotations agree that knight d3 would lead to a more interesting game. However, they evaluate the position completely differently. Batvinik gives the following simple variation. He writes that c4, actually, for black, would be a mistake, because it would lead to b takes c, d takes c, bishop takes b7, rook takes b7, knight takes c4, and white simply is a pawn up. Bronstein, however, 
gives a different variation. After bishop takes b7, he doesn't even look at rook takes b7, and he writes that during the game he thought that Botvinnik prepared a very tricky variation. Instead of rook takes b7, Botvinnik was going to play c3. So the bishop is still under attack. It must uh, retreat, otherwise black would simply capture it and would have a great connected uh, far advanced past pawns. That's why the bishop must retreat. But after this, black doesn't capture on any of the pieces, of course, but plays c2 with a fork, winning the exchange. Queen a2 and c takes d, rook takes d1, and white is exchange, black is exchange up. And Branstein writes that during the game he was quite satisfied that he noticed this trap and uh, didn't fall into it and um, retained his exchange. However, he writes that when he looked at this game in retrospect after a quarter of century, he changed his evaluation and he thought he came to conclusion that maybe it was worse falling into this trap because for exchange white would have a very good compensation, a pawn, and the two pawns in the center, uh, dangerous pawns, which uh, would advance, and two bishops, the advantage of two bishops, which are ideally placed on long diagonals. So white would definitely have a very good compensation in this variation for the exchange. However, instead of knight d3, Branstein played knight takes g6, simple chess. So, in accordance with his initial strategy, to play without any risk in order to avoid the victory, a loss, because he couldn't afford losing this game. H takes G, and D takes C. So now we can see the idea behind his plan with D4. He has created the weakness, the isolated pawn on D5. Bishop takes C5. However, Batvinik writes that he was completely satisfied with his position. Although he has a weakness on d5, he has a compensation for it. The weakness on c3 in white's position would compensate for the isolated pawn. The knight would be rerouted later in the game on this weak square. Besides that, white actually cannot exploit the weakness of the isolated pawn because it is uh, protected. Besides that, um, the c file is open and after this plan with d4, the pieces would be exchanged and that would make the draw closer and closer and Batvinik didn't object against the draw as he was leading in the match and the draw was absolutely okay for him with black pieces. Queen a1. Branstein exerts pressure on the long diagonal. Queen e7, rook c1 and knight g4. Out of nowhere black has created a threat. Black has exerted unpleasant pressure and at the moment, the knight is threatening to sacrifice itself on f2. But when he gives the following variation, if h3, then of course knight takes f2, king takes f2, bishop takes e3 check, king f1, and bishop a6 check. Or, instead of h3, if white captures the pawn, wins the pawn on g7, that would be a blunder because of f6, trapping the bishop. f6 is defended two times, so white cannot capture it, and the bishop is under attack. And if h3, then knight e5. The bishop is still under attack, f6 is still protected, and black is also threatening uh, knight d3 with a fork. That's why after knight g4, as a terrible knight f2 is threatened, Branstein played bishop d4 in order to ease the very unpleasant pressure of uh, the bishop on c5. However, this leads to the exchanges. Rook c8 doubling on c file, knight f3, knight f6, bishop h3 attacking the rook, bishop takes d4, the queen is under attack, so white must capture the bishop, knight takes d4, now the rooks are exchanged, and knight e4, so black has exchanged the defender of c3 square, the bishop, dark squared bishop, and now black knight would ideally would be placed on this square. Bishop c8, so Branstein offers the exchange, so he is satisfied with a draw now. Knight c3, the knight is great now on c3. Bishop takes b7, queen takes b7, f3, king f8, the king is moving towards the center as it's endgame already. Queen f1, queen c8, king g2, g5, g4, g6, 
queen e1, queen e8, queen d2, queen e5. So, but Vinik writes that in this position, actually, black's position is uh, a little bit more preferable, actually, thanks to the more active queen. However, he also writes that, of course, this advantage isn't enough for victory. Queen d3, queen f6, knight c2, king e7, queen d4, offering the exchange of queens. The queens are exchanged, and we have the knight endgame. Knight d1, attacking the weakness on e3. Knight c2, defending it. Instead of knight c2, winning a pawn on a5 after knight c6 check would have been a terrible blunder because of king d6, knight takes a5, and king c7 controlling all the retreat squares of the knight, and the knight would be simply lost after king b6 and king takes a5. That's why after knight d1, of course, knight c2, defending the pawn. And after knight b2, they simply repeated moves and agreed to a draw in this equal position. Hit the like button as it's really helpful for the channel growth and see you in the analysis of game 21.